In this episode, we'll have a look at a few unique architecture houses located in India, Greece, Netherlands, and the UK. Hi, and welcome back to our channel. As always, glad to have supporters. Like, subscribe, and turn on the bell to hear about the latest video. Let's start with the Stepping Own House by Hamish and Lyons in the UK. Three disconnected, underused, and flood-prone outbuildings were replaced with two new buildings that provided additional living accommodation for the existing house. The design seeks to engage the family with the calming effects of nature. This is achieved through the abundant use of daylight, an organic structure, natural materials, and a new landscape design. The smaller of the two new buildings is a self-contained guest house with a kitchen and living space, utility corridor, bathroom, and bed deck. The larger building is the family's main living space. It also has a bed deck and bathroom. It's connected to the existing house via a structural glass bridge. Both buildings can be opened up to each other as the glass at raised ground floor level is designed as sliding opening door panels. The stilts elevate the buildings above the lake, lifting them clear of floodwaters and allowing flush access to the ground floor of the existing house. They also make it possible to swim under the building. A key feature of the design is the roof and its 1.5 meter overhanging eaves, which serve to shade the interiors in summer and also provide a sheltered walkway that merges inside and out. The minimal steel structure was designed to give the impression of the building floating over water. Light bouncing off the water highlights the building's undercroft where the black steel ribs are in contrast to the white corrugated floor deck. Tapered steel fins canter out from the glulam structure at clerestory level to support the overhanging eaves and echo the steel floor supports around the perimeter of the buildings. The architecture's landscape design is integral to the concept of engaging the family with their surroundings and included the swimming lake as well as a circular route around the buildings. From the front parking area, a path snakes through a sheltered garden of large tree ferns, eventually leading out onto stepping stones that cross the lake. The stones link to an elevated walkway and bridge, which connects the two buildings. On the south side, a diving platform extends out and provides a central spot from which to experience the surroundings. A deck leads to further steps down to a brick terrace. The route then dips below the glass link, ending up back at the parking bay. The resulting effect is that the architecture and landscape merge with each other to create a playful and engaging place that's both calming and spiritual. Much of the building was prefabricated, which allowed for a brief construction period on site and minimized waste. The architects developed the design as a modular building system based on a repeated section which allowed for a greater level of efficiency and refinement in the detail. Meet Villa 5050 by Studio Nine Dots. Located in Eindhoven, the Netherlands, Studio Nine Dots designed family home Villa 5050 as a pavilion where volumes alternate between open and closed and where life happens just as much outdoors as indoors. A new typology for maximizing visual and family interaction. The architects took the opportunity to push the typology of the transparent house. Avoiding the obvious locations, all functions are randomly organized as connected volumes between two horizontal planes. This resulted in a pavilion-like house that unfolds across the garden, enhancing the relationship between the building and the landscape, and in a unique patchwork of connections between open and enclosed, between inside and outside. Half house, half garden in one single volume, 50-50. The shared family spaces and the parent spaces are located on the ground floor. The girls have their own rooms in the tiny house in the tower, which is designed to be self-contained. This tower protrudes vertically through the two horizontal slabs. The entrance is situated at the intersection of the pavilion and the tiny house. All volumes are interconnected and mutually independent. Within similar dimensions, the volumes have their own atmosphere and light through the various roof openings and thus contribute to the transition of space. Naturally industrial, 
The design is complemented with industrial materials, united under a palette of grays and with varying textures. Glass dominates naturally to blur the boundaries between inside and outside and to allow for views and open sight lines. Four enclosed volumes feature an unusual application of materials. The master bathroom volume is clad with flagstones, glazed bathroom tiles adorn the walls in the bedroom and office. The round shed is fashioned from semi-transparent corrugated polycarbonate. Wrapped in polished aluminum, the tower subtly mirrors the landscape, creating an almost camouflage surface that reflects the changing seasons and weather. Let's have a look at the Vacation House in Crete, Greece by Pali Architect. Leaning on the rock of the mountain, adapted to the landscape and built with natural materials, this residence has an elongated shape protected from the north and views onto the sea on the south. The project succeeds adapting the building in the environment, use of local materials, exploitation of the view, and protection from the weather condition. Two clean volumes, one with the living room, kitchen, dining room, and one with the bedrooms, connected via a protected, cross-bright, semi-outdoor living space on the north-south direction, starting from the rock, ending on a raised platform suspended between mountain and sea, sky and earth. A long water element created alongside the residence main spaces, also being the boundary to the steep slope, the view, the sea. The synthesis complete per glass and shutters from metal and wood. The challenge was adapting the building on the environment with a non-provocative way and creating the smallest possible wound on the mountain. The synthesis consists of a one-story elongated rectangular parallelopipe hugged by a shape L stone wall on the north and west with big openings, a water element, and outdoor living spaces to the south. The stone wall boundary of the mountain that continues onto the flat roof and a continuation of the natural ground. Basic synthetic element, the intermediate space between indoor-outdoor spaces, the shelter. Big sliding windows on the living room unify the indoor and outdoor space, creating a big cupboard with pergola living space, which unify with the semi-outdoor space. The specialized exterior plaster, the rusty metals, the thermal insulating frames and glass for the high summer temperatures and the other materials used do not require special maintenance and are durable to the local weather condition. The visible uncoated concrete, the clay on the color of soil on the exterior walls, the rusty metals, the crooked wood on pergolas and the natural dry stone are the basic materials of the villa. The planting like a continuation of the mountain on the roof of the villa and on other spaces. Next, we travel to India to see the Weekend House by Studio 4000. Project was an opportunity to engage with a pristine forested site located on the banks of the Sabarmati River near Ahmedabad in India. As linear blocks, the house, pool, and water tower are oriented along different coordinate axes to engage three-dimensionally with the site. In each, different floors and landings are worked out to be accessible from varying levels of the landscape. A thick retaining wall courses zigzag along the plateau's edge to stabilize the building on its slope. It forms compact, room-like spaces which accommodate services, kitchen, dining, wash yard, toilets, storage, etc. In contrast, a large columned hall covered from top by a hyperbolic paraboloid exposed roof is developed near the river-facing edge. Section develops by scooping out a rectangular void at the plateau's edge. Finally, the hyperbolic paraboloid roof is modulated to follow the natural gradient of the ground below. Mirroring the landscape, it reintroduces the original shape of the hill, lost initially to construction, to envelop the entire house from above and characterize its spatial experience. The project uses a composite structural system. The roof is cast manually using pine wood shuttering. Teak wood and glass panels are used to make door and windows. In places, they are carefully thickened to integrate furniture into them and become inhabitable zones. Elsewhere, they're made much thinner to wrap around the structure and maximize the view. Exterior stone cladding extends to the basement, eliminating the need for visible plinth protection. It expresses limits of building's intervention into the landscape, allowing it to be perceived as literally growing out of the ground.
As always, thanks for the visit. Subscribe and turn on the bell to hear about our latest videos if you haven't done so yet. See you soon.